Okay, good morning, good morning. This is Michael Wynn with Oasis Ministries, and on this week's Kingdom Talk, uh, Pastor's got a whole a whole thing for us to go towards. Kingdom-minded. Kingdom-minded. I've read over it, and this, this is some really good stuff, but first I want to invite you at MDT Church, November the 7th, Sunday morning at 11, and Sunday night at 6, we are having Pastor's Appreciation. And this year, I'm telling you, it is going to be a celebration. We've got some of the best food we've done. Um, we've got some big surprises in the ceremony for the morning service. Please come out. You don't want to miss this. There's going to be a lot of fellowship, a lot of fun. This coming November the 7th, so that's two weeks? Two weeks. Two, two weeks away. away. Two Sundays away. Come and worship with us. Come and be with us. Come and fellowship and see Pastor November the 7th. Open it up here. Tell, tell us what this, you got for us This today. is our first meal together in a while. Oh, man, I'm so ready. So this is going to be fun, just just country cooking. Don't forget to bring desserts. Oh, you better bring some desserts. Yeah. We like pies. We like cakes. Actually, Cookies. we like desserts. we we'll have big cake and ice cream. Oh, my goodness. Me and Babe's, Babe's excited about this one. I, lo- I love Pastor and his congregation, Oasis Ministries. But, this church, so, we we love you, Pastor. I'm telling you, people love you far and wide little, around here. Little Sheila's in the the backbone of it all. Her and Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hey, people that can't come, I'd sure like to have some notes or a letter. If our life and ministries touch your life, if you can't be at the service, send us some comments or send us a letter. I'd like to hear from folk who our life has touched. That's my encouragement. He he saves those. He's got these boxes where he gets uh, any of his encouraging letters from the whole ministry. So we've got we've actually made a template. And for people that have been requesting something to write on to send to you, we got you a really nice uh, uh, stationery. There's the word. I'm running slow today that we can mail you. So if you would like that, message us here. Call us at 1-877-226-4088 or comment below, and we'll get that to you. Here's what this: the Lord's laid this whole series on your heart. This set here, we got so many sets, got more planned. Uh, But this one's kingdom connection, just being part of the kingdom, kingdom-minded, the kingdom life. And uh, your greatest security right now, when when banks could go broke, when CDs, you, the government, people don't want to talk about it. We're in a, we're in a mess. Our government's in a mess. We're, we're stretched out. Uh, uh, we're so in debt. I don't know if our, our great-grandchildren will ever see. We're stretched out. If they do more taxes, gas is $3 in California, $8. Your greatest security right now it's not in CDs or DVDs. It's not in, in, in all the things you could buy, all the things you could do. It's not in books. It's not in this. Your greatest thing right now is in the kingdom. So you can buy books and read them. You can buy CDs and watch them. You can buy DVDs and try to find answers. Your greatest answer right now is investing in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And I like this, investing in the kingdom. Watch this. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast to the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Friend, he's going to take care of us. Amen. He kept us through World War I, World War II, the Depression. He's kept us through the Korean War, the Vietnam. He's going to take care of us. I was young. I'm old. I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken. Therefore, take no thought, saith what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Whither shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first. If you have a need, if you have a light bill, a phone bill, if you have a sickness, a pain, trouble in your home, your marriage, your children, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. To be kingdom minded is a vision beyond your four walls. Amen. I'm going to cut some of short. we got so much to, to say. But getting here with me, Mike, the kingdom, it's the realm or the region of a country governed by a king. And, and Jesus just don't govern Oasis Ministry, Miracle Delivers Tabernacle. He don't just govern the Baptist and the Church of God and the Assembly of God and the UPC, the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Methodist, the Presbyterian. He don't just govern that. He, he's a governor of the world. And we, we let our little vision be. It's just me and my wall. That's not kingdom minded. In fact, that is selfishness. When all, when, and I know some of it's not going to go for good, but when all you think about, well, I'm going to be a good pastor and I'm going to give my life to everything inside these four walls, you're really no different from the world because Wendy's worries about Wendy's. McDonald's worries about McDonald's. Uh, Walmart didn't send out no grief cards when Kmart shut down here. Mm-mm. 
They're not kingdom minded. All they're minded about my store, my four, no less, no more. To be kingdom minded is others. Well, that's where Christ was. And you know, I, I love, I love our church. But when you think about it, when we think of the church as a whole, we ain't just thinking of MDT. We're thinking of his place around the world. And, and our church is so diversified, it, it, it's got just a multitude of, of people from different walks of life. Everybody's not just from a Pentecostal background. We have people from every background. But with the kingdom talk like this, with a kingdom mindset like this, you're saying that our church that we're building here, that we build Oasis Ministries out of, is no more important than the underground basement church in North Korea. Not at all. That, that's the reason we send thousands to Haiti. Uh, uh, if, if, if I love you and Jesse and Henry and John and Hannah and Kara and Sheila and Daddy, if I love, and then I love my office workers, giving you knowing that you're going to take care of me, mm -hmm. that is not kingdom-minded. But when I see them little people in, in Haiti that we're getting at, asking nothing back from, uh, so, so many areas that, that, I, that I'm, just, I'm just seeing kingdom mind. Here's what I want to talk about. Uh, I honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall bust out with new wine. It's no time to hold back from giving to God. No. It's no time to hold back on our tithes or offerings. It's no time to hold back on, on feeding the poor. It's no time to hold back on caring for the homeless. It's no time to hold back. He that he that giveth the poor lendeth to the Lord, and he will repay. Now watch this. It's, this is just rough stuff. If you love them which love you, Luke 6, 30, 32, if you love them which love you, what thank have you for sinners love those that love them? Now that's rough. That is rough. Well, Brother Wynn, I've taken care of my church. Yeah, but your church is taking care of you. Well, Brother Wynn, I'm taking care of my family. I'm a good daddy. Yeah, but your family's taking care of you. I know somebody now has just laid their life down for their family, but I can't think of anything they've ever done for anybody else. Nothing. Man. I can't think of one thing they've helped us. Not one thing. But they, they're the best person laid their life down for their family. But I can't think of nothing they've done for somebody else. Is that... That's, that's rough on me. That's tough. So, so we're, we're church-minded, we're denominational-minded, we're organized-minded, but we've got to get kingdom-minded. So you're, talk, talk to us more about this. So kingdom is given without expecting return. Can I, tell you where, can I tell you a pretty picture of kingdom? Yeah. And I've never heard this talked about in this phrase. They're, they're, they're having a, a convention. They're having the, uh, they've got the best, they, made, they brought the number one speaker in, and he draws a crowd. And uh, the crowd gets there. You know who the speaker was? Who? Jesus. The crowd gets there, and he's took this convention so far out in the woods. There's no market. There's no McDonald's. There's no Hardee's. And one little boy, he's the only, only one apparently who realized this, this guy's a long-winded preacher. <laughs> it ain't going to be no 30-minute sermon. And he brings his fish and loaves of bread. And the disciples looked at him and said, you're no benefit to the kingdom. What can, what can such little bit do with so many? Uh -huh. And no doubt the child looked at his and said, what benefit can I do to the kingdom? But the child did not think of himself. He thought of others. Uh -huh. You want real joy, it's Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. And you know, sometimes it's a chore to lay, lay your life down for your family or your friends, but man, I see a kingdom where, we, where, where Jesus is loving that thief on the cross, where Jesus is loving that soldier driving nails in his hands, where Jesus is loving the pilot that's condemning him, and Jesus is loving the guy with the whip in his hand. I see a kingdom. And that, and when, and now listen to this, and I'm going to get ahead of myself, but when you, we're not going to see real miracles to we get kingdom-minded. They marveled. They took up 12 baskets of bread because one lad gave himself to others. He gave everything he had to others. I'm sure one of those baskets went back home with that lad. Hey, he deserved that basket of bread. <laughs> what do you think, Chloe? You think one basket? Uh, he, when, when you give, when you give. And I, and I think about the times of myself, and I, I don't ever remember quit paying my tithes, but I remember things getting tight and I'm buckling down. But it stayed tight. But I remember when things got tight and I just kept giving and kept 
reaching and loving people, doing for people. God always give me miracles. Always. One statement I've heard you say before, God always bless the blessed. And you can watch it and follow it. Uh, it seems like when someone gets at these situations that they just, from the outside, surpass. I, I wonder if some of the people that we look at that seem blessed from the outside, they stay true to tithing, they stay true to commitment, they stay true to their volunteering when times were tough. And they stay true to forgiving. They stay true to loving. They stay true to pray. There's times you get hurt, you don't want to forgive no more. You don't, you don't want to reach no more. You get hurt. Mm -hmm. how, how many times have mom and I, baby and I, how many times have we reached and picked somebody up and think and then six months later they cut your throat, they lie on you, they, they walk away from you, you pour yourself into them to walk away. If we, if we counted those and we we operated in the work of God according to those. I'd have quit a long time ago. But kingdom minded is you, you, you keep sowing no matter what the reaping is from that situation because you know overall God's going to balance things out. That's good. That is good. Yeah. It, it sounds a lot. Um, people, people get scared in their investments because they say, well, today something's dropping, something's dropping. When you invest in the gospel, it don't really drop, does it? No, no. So here's what we want to talk about today. And you help, help me find this key to help somebody. Don't just go inside your, and, and you got to start there. you got to start Jerusalem, let it grow. I am, and I, boy, I'm, I don't want to be just, just, just sounding so much about, but I am so honored our work. I have got personal calls. Brother Wynn, I'm so proud of Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle. They're checking on my mama. They're checking on my mother-in-law. They're, che they're checking on, we've, we've had a death. And it's not you just, Brother Wynn. I've had five calls. I've had five texts. I've had knocks on my doors. It's not just it's not just you pastors. Uh, they brought food to my house. They they brought they've helped me pay a bill. They've helped me. I was getting texts last night. Just in my lowest time, I'm overwhelmed at the grace of God. My needs are being met, and it's through family share. And we'll, you and I, they'll never tell us. This other person told me. They'll never told me they paid a light bill. They'll never told me. But what they're they're catching, kingdom minded. Mm -hmm. It's not just about taking care of my child. It's not just loving you and caring Jesse. It's not just loving babies. It's loving that that stranger. It's loving this one. Now, 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 I'm not going to turn around and let people, people take advantage of us. People, there's some people, I have never seen the worth, the work ethic so low right now in America, and 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 I, I told Babe last night, I, and I, I helped somebody. I said, Babe, you know what I just did? I said I poured bucket, water in a bucket that don't have no bottom. I said that, that this person don't care. They're not going to try. But I said I'm not going to let them go hungry. But we got to quit beating ourselves up and pouring ourselves into people that don't want to change somehow. And I know, I know people are going to get some hate mail over this. But sometimes you got to throw Jonah overboard and say, Jonah, if you don't want to get right with God and if you don't want to support your family and if you don't want to do, you can't keep draining me. I've got to let you go and you work it out with God. You call it tough love. You call it, I just call it kingdom minded. You, and I, you got a lot of people watching us just like me and you. They yeah, work those yeah. 40, 50, 60, yeah. and sometimes them 70-hour weeks, and they've given and they've not seen good results from the given because they gave to people and they've done bad things. How do you encourage them not well, to hang on to just that one time? Darrell in, in the Dakotas who have been so kind to us, he, he's, he farms like 5,000 acres, but he tells me, he says, there's one hill over there that's covered with rocks. He said, someday I'm going to reclaim that farm. And he said, I just go in a little bit and take the rocks out. But if he went in and sowed seed right now, he would waste it. Because he, even if it grew, he couldn't harvest it. So so at, at 61 years of age, I want to help somebody. I, I plan on making some mission trips. Mm -hmm. I, I got some secret things I pray about me and you going on some trips, taking our taking our families. I, I got some plans in my heart. Jesse, you might start working on the passport. I just, I just got some plans in my heart. And I feel God's going to honor it. But this thing got to start at home and grow out. So you, 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 you got to start at your family and just let it get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'd like to take the whole Oasis, Oasis team on a, on a mission trip. I would love that. Can't you imagine how we can flow together and work together and operate together? The, uh, it changes your life forever, oh, too. It, ch it changes your, your, your thankfulness, your appreciation, your love for God, your respect for people. Oh, it changed. We're, we're so blessed in our hardest days. We're so blessed. Yes, sir. But Mike, got to be kingdom minded. You got to lose this mindset. It's just me and my four, and it's just all about. It's not. It never was all about us. Until we get the heart of Jesus, others. No greater love is this than any man that a man lay his life down 
for his friends. So we, you know, we say the kingdom is about winning the world and the kingdom is about great preaching. The kingdom is about others. It's about caring for people. Mm -hmm. It's about a king who rules over a kingdom. He just don't rule over a miracle delivers tabernacle or 300 folk here. He, he cares about a hurt and lost world out there. Until I catch his vision, I'm not going to have his, his, his favor like I could have it until I catch his vision. When I learn to love, even though I hurt inside. When I see a little child and I can cure is it. You know, when I went to, uh, to Haiti and saw those children and come back, it, it just, and I saw, if I'm going to love Kara, do everything I can for her and Henry, I'll do all I can for those babies. They're orphans. They have no mama. They have no daddy. What you're talking about, it's also encouraging me how many people that actually call in and how many partners have exploded for Haiti? You know, they, they don't know those kids' names like me and you do. They didn't get all the hugs. They didn't get to go play with them. They didn't get to kick all the balls. Wow. But they were kingdom-minded enough to donate to them. A special thank you to, the, uh, to those who were that kingdom-minded to care for people that you may never meet, that you may never go to that orphanage. Thank you for changing their life. Yeah. Well, somebody's watching today. Think of a family where their baby don't have new shoes, and your baby's got new shoes. You know, if you if you can afford it, and if you can't contact us, you know, just uh, see what we can do. I I want to I want to make a difference in somebody's life. I want to help some. I want somebody to know that somebody cares about you. You know, if you know somebody, we have our pantry here. You know, if you know somebody don't have food, don't don't go hungry. I I'm, I'm not I'm not. Can I just talk? Just talk. Tell. I, I, your I don't heart. I don't want to buy. I, I'm not. I'm not interested in buying groceries. That family's got five cell phones, HBO, Showtime, all this stuff, and dad and mom in bed won't work. You know, but that's a different story. But somebody wanting to do good and they're struggling and they're trying, and I want to pick somebody and help. And this is where it goes back to your question. This is where we're wounded. The people have poured into yeah. people and they've helped people, and they turn around and they realize, you know, uh, I, I, I sit and Sheila and I sit, and Babe and I sit in Knoxville, and we watch somebody that. Ask him for money. They're there, you know, and, and we just, just, I said, let's take your walk. They had a beautiful car. <laughs> it was just, it was just a, it, it was just a, a, a game with them. There's, there's a gentleman in Athens who asks for money all the time. Yeah. You know, we saw him getting a beautiful Mercedes. And if, and if, and if you look at that, you'll never want to help nobody else. You gotta, you gotta uh, hug this one, say goodbye, and move, move on, and help somebody else. And so so pray. Just don't just don't randomly give. Pray. Be led of the Lord. Be led of the Lord. I, I want to find somebody. That little lad. He didn't have much. He didn't have much. First, he gave it to the Lord. The Lord blessed it, and he gave it. And he fed a multitude. And so, then, and then, like you said, I think he ended with more than he started. Oh, and, and the whole multitude, he fed that thousands. Then there was 12 baskets to come. I, I'd love to give in a place where my blessings overflow. Yeah. I'd love that. And not just money, but, but peace mm -hmm. and, and prayers. My, my prayers, you know. Uh, if you're not careful, you get tired of praying for people that don't want to change. You get, you get tired of loving people that keep hurting you. You get tired of forgiving people that never, never want to give back anything so I think the enemy just like God's wanting to work using this I think the enemy likes to attack people through this yeah. I think he's looking for people and he said how great would it be to discourage someone in a kingdom mindset so someone who's given he said well and he'll do that whisper he'll do that lie and he'll plant that seed of doubt well they never changed or they weren't really working or they were lazy well, you've got to realize that that's just the smallest part of this. You've got to stay encouraged knowing that you're making an impact on the bigger picture. If the boy went, uh, that was giving out the fish and the loaves of bread, if he just looked and said, well, I was the only one that cared enough to bring, he could have given up and walked away, and we wouldn't have had that story thousands of years later. Someone's got to be willing to stand up, get past the hurt, and make an impact kingdom on this world. In the mid-60s, a famous preacher who was my friend, he's in heaven now, uh, his finances was tight that week. And he was preaching in, in a small town, and he got to town early, and he found him a place to park and pray. It was on a Saturday afternoon. The stores were shut down at 12. 
And he said, a little seven or eight girl comes down the sidewalk, and he said, her hair dirty, her little face not washed, her clothes hadn't been washed in a while, her, her, her little shoes tattered, no socks. And, 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 and he said, she's the most beautiful, pitiful looking thing you ever saw. And he said he knew, knew a, a strange gentleman, you, you don't talk to a child, just respectful. And, and, and he went into the store, and the clothing store is fixing to, 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 to close, a little store there. He counted up how much money he had that he could spare to get him to his next meeting. And he told the lady, he said, lady, who's the child out here? They said, well, her, her, mom, and, her mom and dad, you know, they, they've wasted their life, and they, they, they just, they, they're never sober. And she just lives on the streets, and people feed her, and she just wanders the street from daylight to dark and go home and sleep and hope somebody feed her. And he, he said, uh, he said if, if I'll take my money and I'll, you pick out and you buy her underclothes, shoes, socks, a bow, beautiful dress, everything. And he said, if I'll pay for it, will you take her back her and bathe her? And the lady started squalling. She said, I, I, I want it. She said, I would do it myself if I had the money. I have no money. She said, I would gladly do this. She goes and gets a little girl. She cleans her, cleans her up, gets her back to eat, bathes her back there. The store shut down. It's, tw it's 12 by then. Puts her new clothes on, and the little girl walks out. She asked the lady, she said, who, who, who got me these beautiful clothes? I've never had new clothes. She pointed to the gentleman over there, the preacher. He hadn't left yet. The little girl walks up and knocks on his window. He rolls the window down, and she said, sir, the lady told me you bought me all this. He said, yes. She said, can I ask you something? He said, yes. She said, nobody's ever really loved me. Are you Jesus? Nobody's ever really cared for me. Are you Jesus? That's kingdom. He'll never see this child again. He'll never receive nothing from her, but he changed a life. That's kingdom. So this has got me stirred this morning. I feel this, Dad. So for the day, I want to buy a meal or help somebody, encourage somebody. In fact, I'm meeting somebody in two hours. I got me a set up. Somebody just just needs to be loved. So. Well, you, you come into your clothes. Ha challenge us. What's something we can do? Jesse, Chloe, what's some child? What's something? How, how do we just love people? Be, let somebody see Jesus in you. Are you Jesus? What would Jesus do? That neighbor, that neighbor that's struggling, what would Jesus do? That, that family member that just lost somebody's hurting, what would, you, would he text them today? Would he call them today? Would he pray for them today? Would he say, hey, sometime when depression settles, just say, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you. I called a man in. Uh, another state, a western state I hadn't spoke to in months. Called him at probably 9.30 at night, which is too late to call people. And uh, he answered the phone. He said, hello. And I said, hello. He said, is this, who is this? I said, Brother Wynn. He said, Brother Wynn. He said, he said I'm just, just so broken. He said, I asked the Lord. I said, would you let Brother Wynn call me? <laughs> hadn't talked to him much. Just, just those kingdom moments. And somebody, God's speaking to you right now. Knock on the door. Send a letter, send a text, send an email. Uh, call somebody and ask them, do you, do you have a need? And God, God don't want you to use your, devil's extremist. He wants you to use your house money to pay somebody else's. That's not the will of God. But no. there's somebody, somebody. I'm not asking you to give somebody 100. I'm not asking you to give them 10. I'm asking you to give them a fish and a loaf. Well, time too. Watch this, watch this. That fish and a loaf's only going to affect him for one day. So God, God didn't ask for that boy's monthly income, yearly income. He said, this is only going to feed you for one day. Would you give it to me? I have never saw that. What you were saying a second ago, uh, a big challenge to a lot of us is we've become so tight with our time. Oh, no greater love is this than any man that a man lay down his life. One of our most important things right now is our time. A lot of people listening, we have no issue throwing down some money to pay for a meal, buy a kid a toy who ain't got nothing to do and things like that. But when you challenge with our time, it gets a little more difficult. T tell us how we can give some time some more ways. I love that. Well, if, uh, if, I, can, if I can mention a name, Joanne Stevens, she sing, sings in our choir. She, she's so anointed. Yeah. Just, just got a call, said, said Joanne had made a call to somebody in need and said, with the wind, that phone call turned this person around. Joanne's love turned this person around. Could you imagine sacrificing a few minutes of your time following God to change someone's outcome, change someone's situation? Uh, we all were thankful for the moment someone checked on us. Uh, Carmela and Faith just made a visit this weekend.
turn a visit turn somebody around these are phone calls I'm getting out and I, it's got me all excited just my just, mind's rolling. I got three calls yeah, I can make today yeah yeah turn somebody around uh, Jonathan went to David to Ziph in the woods and he lifted up his hands now now Saul's got the pulpit Saul's the king but to be kingdom minded is the next generation David's the next generation and, and, and the enemy's not attacking the, this generation he's attacking the next generation and Jonathan said I'm, I'm not going to just strengthen this generation I'm going to reach and strengthen the next generation before it gets broken Man. So kingdom minded is not just Abraham minded, it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it's just the on on down curing about not just the one with the microphone, curing about the kingdom. David had no microphone, he had no platform, he's hid in a cave, but he's the next generation. That's kingdom minded. And man. So, yeah, this this is So uh, what are you gonna what's what's your what's your challenge to you and Jesse? Uh Real talk. Um, I know some people that don't even come here. They they can they can talk on the phone a long time, and you postpone, you postpone. But I'm I'm gonna just call them and encourage them. Lay down some time, set it aside. Say if I gotta go to bed later, if I gotta stay up later, I'm just gonna sit and talk. You're like me. You like to walk and talk. I like to walk and talk. If I can get out, yeah, just. And, uh, walk and another pray. thing, we we love doing this, and we do this every year. We take all the game changers. And we get a list of kids that are in need, and we get them a bunch of gifts and toys. And the whole church gets in on that. I'd like to grow that this year. Okay. Let's, let's do something else. Chloe, Jesse, write this down. I'm not going to drop names right now, but it's, it's, a, it's a widow in, in Ohio, one of our faithful partners. Probably $20 for the last 20 years every month. Wow. But her children live two blocks away. Don't check on her. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to send some cards this week. I want to go to our partnership and just say, hey, you're important. We love you. I thought of something, and I don't know if it's appropriate time to talk about it. We did, uh, calls. we did. We painted the pumpkins Thursday, and we got a lot of creativity. I was wondering if we could do some creative gifts to send to some of our shut-ins. I would love it. I would love it. If we it. could figure out some ideas, something that we it. could do for them. I would love it. And get to them. Because it would show that we got people Karen sent with a picture of the whole youth group. You know, I had me, a, Sheila and I had a little grandma widow woman in our community. And I never walked in our church. And I preached her funeral. So I wouldn't love for her to give something back. i got to find me somebody else in our community mm -hmm. that I'm asking. Yeah. Met some wonderful neighbors the other day. I just, just loved them. Oh, they were. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I want to I do that. I, I, I I want to. I want to. I want to find that little girl. Say, you remind me of Jesus. I, yeah. Dad, I just feel challenged today. I feel stirred up. Is this kingdom? This is kingdom. This is one hundred. I think this I is mean, the stuff when God looks down, and God feels, this is my vision. I, th I think this is the foundation that holds up the building. Because mm -hmm. we can have all the kingdom preaching, go into all the world, but if we don't have a foundation, of of reality under it, then it's just kind of a. Sounding, tinkling symbols, just sounding, you know. And you know, a, a lot of people, they, you come to church, you're a Christian. This is, this isn't you come to church, you're a Christian. This is, if you believe this, you are daily called. And you are daily responsible, and your fellow man is important to you. So this, this puts a blanket on the whole church. It, you ain't got to use a microphone, everyone, everybody's called. Do, do, do you know when to, somebody might want to help us. Financially support this little but do you know in two now we went to Haiti and we built a house for widow. Mm -hmm. Do you know in, in, in two weeks I'm marring your youth mm -hmm. and we have a widow we're gonna clean up her property, clean up her house, do some restoration, build a ramp, and make a difference in America. If we can do it in Haiti, you know. And we ain't even talked about the drug we have in Florida. We talked about some other reaches, but this this is kingdom minded. With the youth group, we've done this, you know, a couple times before. They're amazing. <laughs> one, one one night, your youth hauled seventeen loads. Yeah, Do you remember that? I remember that. I hauled I five remember, or six of them. <laughs> I remember how tired. I I remember how tired. Yeah. But I remember the knowing that we had made a difference. I know they were tired because we bought them all pizza, and there were some of them just laying on the floor. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I said, uh oh, <laughs> they, they cooked. This is what I want to pursue. And I, and I am. I'm, I'm trying hard to study my sermons. I'm trying hard to pray. But I want to be a Christian. I want this, to be kingdom minded. This is stuff we've been doing this large scale for years. I, I'm just this feeling, is how we try to live, but this, I just feel like telling others we've yeah. got to push this. And I, I, I never saw, little lad, if you'll give us your one little meal and take a basket home with you. Mm-hmm. Not, a, not a little pouch for you can take a basket back to your mom she can sell it sell it and go buy you some new clothes for a week yeah well god bless you mike i'm no. proud of you i love you jesse chloe thank you lady you got so anointed sunday morning you just you sang it was 10 to 10 god bless you you're at a good place in the lord proud of you love you jesse proud of you well i hope the church really enjoyed her me and jesse missed her in sunday school <laughs> <laughs> um Coming here to our close, we're about to go straight into the next one. Would you invite everyone to tune in tomorrow or the next day for Golden Harvest? Tell them what that is. Oh. Tell them what's going on. Back, back in the 60s, when, when, when I'm five or six years old, God gave the daddy the name Golden Harvest Revivals. And that meant it's harvest time. The fields are they're just, Gold, yeah. just golden, ready to rot. So just in, in, in the moments... But Daddy will be sat down here, and you and him are going to be talking about golden harvest revivals, reaping the harvest, winning souls, changing lives. we got a lot going on now. We're in a good season. We have a lot, and also tune in. Uh, I've got all my days confused, but we have the Go Ye podcast. I, I like listening to that one, too. So tell me more about it. Tell everybody. Go Ye, brother Shane McCann. This guy, he sits down, he studies, and he, he comes, what, they're between three and seven minutes normally, sometimes uh, ten and he gets so many good nuggets out of like, like even Jonah, he'll he'll find a nugget in some of the most common Bible stories. And, and he's not only a preacher; he's he, he's he's so in love with Jesus, and his heart shines. His family. He, he's, he's got he's your the, vision of um, kingdom. Oh yeah, from the street preaching to loving people. To, he goes and buys pizza, uh, gives them out to the homeless just so yeah. he can preach to them. Yeah, and it works. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, so take a moment to t- tune into some of those other things. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. And tonight at 7 p.m. is prayer. Please come out or watch our live stream. God bless you. I challenge you. you to love others. God bless you. God bless you.